Hello, and welcome to the Novi Conversation. I'm Steve Waltz. And I'm Holly Kudel. Holly, what are yeah. you doing here? Where's Jeff? Jeff's on vacation. So this was my golden opportunity to jump into his seat and just have some fun with you and talk to all of our listeners out there. Wow. <clears throat> you might have to help me because, you know, I've always had Jeff. I might get lost. So just have to reel me in. <laughs> oh, I think you'll be fine. Just, you know, I don't have brightly colored tennis shoes. I'm old school. They're just white, plain old white tennis shoes. And I won't pick on you nearly as much as Jeff does. Well, that's. That's nice because, you know, he can be a bully sometimes. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I'll be out there with those bright tennis shoes and sunglasses uh, trying to order us around. Nice. Well, yeah, Jeff's out this week. Jeff, we hope you have a good vacation. And we're not even going to tell you about this podcast. We hope you figure it out on your own. Right. <laughs> you know, we're going to find out if he listens to him, right? Yeah, I'll just tune in and like, hey, <laughs> where'd that come from? Uh, That'll be so, fun. So I guess since uh, you hijacked it. Uh, what, what do you want to talk about? I hijacked it and I thought, man, you know what? Steve's always talking to our ISVs, our Microsoft folks, te- people on our team, and uh, about what their passion is and what their thoughts are and their, their fit in the company. And none of us ever get a chance really to talk to you about what where you fit in the company, what your passions are and stuff. And, you know, I met you through the NAVA community, Mm -hmm. goodness gracious, many years ago. And you've kind of become a brother to me and, you know, now a co-worker. And just um, your passion is very similar to mine about people and customers and making sure um, people are successful in the business world and even in their personal lives. You know, you do cross that line sometimes and, and step into their personal space and care about them. You know, and so I just thought it'd be great to have that kind of a conversation, talk about the things that we love and uh, right. where you're at. All right. I'll like, uh, is, yeah, Jeff would enjoy that because, you know, I, I tend to like to talk about myself or talk from what I heard from others. <laughs> 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 oh, so, well, first off, uh, when it comes to passion, I can tell you this in the whole company, there's no one more passionate about NAV and Business Central than Donovan. So we all fight for second place, right? Right. Yeah. But it's all about passion of what of what we do. And so, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, how I, you know, been at Inovi now for five years and, you know, been fortunate. I was, you know, with a Fortune 50 company, you know, I retired there six years ago before I came over to Inovia. And the experiences that gave me uh, are, you know, were, were, were wonderful. It gave me a chance to, you know, to really not just see the sales side of it, but the marketing operations, uh, you know, getting all these teams to function on it. So, uh, but I think what I'm passionate about um, the most is, you know, is, is this really, you know, helping people understand the word why, right? Because we live in this pool of fear, I think. Everybody is happy with the status quo, right? Sure. We, were, we were kind of talking earlier. Here's a line in the sand. Hey, Holly, right. cross that line. I don't know. It's pretty comfortable over here, right? I don't yeah. know what's on the other side of the sand. And, you know, it's just something that's always intrigued me. Even when I was in college, I had, you know, uh, a psychology interpersonal relations minor and just the thought of human behavior. And, and But in business, you know, what, what we deal with a lot here at Inovia is helping people deal with that fear of change, right? Because right. In, yeah, uh, whether it's an ISV, an implementation, mm-hmm. or just a process change. Sometimes just a simple process change can push them over the edge. Well, yeah, because it's, you know, with the ERP world and, you know, the biggest thing when I came over and you know, when Tom when Tom reached out to me and we had conversations <clears throat> is, OK, you know, it's it's, it, you know, an ERP system because, you know, when I was with the pharma company. We use SAP and Salesforce. There's thousands of users on both and uh, no salespeople touch you the ERP system. You can live in a CRM which was a good, you know, now I see, I understand why, right? right. <laughs> I didn't really understand why that I know now on it, but, uh, and, but what happens is everybody wants to reinvent the old and that has always perplexed me. Right. And, and, and when I first started the first year and I, t- I was talking with Tom, I said, you know, everybody's like, they hate their ERP system until they implement the new one. And the old one seems like it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been in this for a lot longer. Am I, is, am I on yeah. something there? Or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's there's a comfort zone uh, with uh, what was and and this, the fear of what's now going to happen in the new system. Uh, 
at, a, at, at the company I was at before, we uh, moved into a new environment and the, the first couple months were painful and right. uh, nobody liked it. And I kept saying, hang in there, you know, we'll get through this rough stage. And then, you know, it, we implemented in October. I says, give it till Christmas and then you'll like the new toy. It'll be it'll be fun and new and exciting and shiny by Christmas. And, you know, by uh, by February and Valentine's Day, y'all will be in love with it and you'll forget about the old one. And uh, that really kind of rang true. But, yeah, when you first jump in, it's like, oh, what did we do? Right. Why did we make this change? But if you hang in there and stick with it, you'll find you really like it. And, and I think that's what you just said is you had a plan at, at, at a high level, right, at a leadership level. And, you know, people want to know you got your back. Uh, we have a plan. Uh, there could be bumps in the road. We'll figure it out. Right. You know, and I do a lot of reading. And you, you talk to a lot of these leaders, you know, yeah, you want you want to fail fast. Right. Versus, you know, not to, not that you want to fail, but oh, now you know what not to do. Right. right. So, sometimes, especially in the world of sales, are your biggest lessons uh, of learning. And, you know, it's one of the things that. Uh, but I've been very fortunate because we have so many talented people here. I've, I've learned to ask so many better questions because of the consultants we have and the other in customer engagement people in our leadership team is, you know, if you think about like that fear of change. So, you know, I've been in my house for 25 plus years. And for the last 15 years, my bride and I have been looking at our countertops going, you know, we should get new countertops. And then about two years ago, our sink just started tripping a little bit. So almost two years later, we finally took the plunge to get new countertops. But I just accepted it like you're, it's just there, right? And you're just used to it. And I, and I told her when we were going through this, you know, I, I wonder if we're going to look at each other and say, you know, why didn't we do this 10, 15 years ago or, you know, or why? But it would be interesting to have that conversation. So my, my brother, Bob, works at Lowe's in, in, in Ohio, and he does flooring. And, and he was telling me how. I guess they are considered essentials in COVID. Did you know that? <laughs> right. And flooring is essential. You know, everybody's stuck at home, staring at their walls, staring at their flooring, staring at their appliances. So for those type of companies, it's been good. So but exactly. we uh, decided to make the plunge and we met with this guy. And it's funny, the guy that I dealt with at Lowe's was named Jeff. <laughs> so how? Oh, imagine that. How, how does that work out? <laughs> and so after we did it, we said, you know, you they wanted six hundred dollars to pull out the current countertops, Holly. And I looked wow. at him. I said, "I can pull those out. I'm, I think I can do that." And so, and I said, "Okay." And I go, "What is that entitled?" He goes, "Well, you know, you just got to make sure it's it's all ready for the person to come in." So I said, "So I, what I understand is that I just I disconnect the plumbing and you come in and you can connect everything back up and we're all good." Yes. So they came out and did it, and then right before the guy left, said, "You know, I'm like, aren't you going to hook the plumbing up?" Well, that's that wasn't included in the work order. And I looked at the work order I signed and guess what? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. So I'm like, okay. And, and I, and I, I read it, but you know what? I, so I called the project manager, their project manager and said to her, said to her, her name was Mary, wonderful person. And I said, you know, Mary, I know in the conversation that I, that was talked about that the plumbing would be hooked up, but I'm looking at this document that I signed. I go, shame on me. You know, I didn't ask the right question. And she's like, well, let me reach out to Jeff. Well, Jeff was out that day. So Mary calls me back middle of the day and says, I'm talking to a supervisor. Later on that day, the supervisor says, we got your back. They came out the next day. That guy was here two hours, went to get parts, came back for another hour. And they paid, everything was included. And then oh, they called me I up, see how, how my experience was. And I told Mary, I said, you know, Mary, you remind me of my company. You know, and I said, I really appreciate what you guys did. And I got a survey, gave them a great survey. But, you know, it made me think of like, I didn't know to ask about, you know, it's one thing to unhook the plumbing. Uh, it's another thing to reconnect it. Get it. Yeah. Just, just wash your old things in there. So, but, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I, I really thought of our process that whole time thinking, you know, because sometimes we don't know what to ask and they don't know what to tell. We just assume things. But what did, what did that project manager do? What did Lowe's do? Right. They stepped up. They stepped up and made it right. And this is my first project. I was a Home Depot guy. We've done two, but my brother is like, he just loves it. He says how great the company is. And I'm like, okay, you know, you're good to my brother. We're going to go with you. 
So, uh, and just, just, just a great experience on that, but it's, you know, it was that whole time of, uh, you know, it, and the thing as a salesperson, what I thought of was, you know, and, 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 you know, granted that Jeff, he was out, but you can, I explained to my wife said, you could be great 90% of the time, right? Everything you, 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 your intents were, your intention was good. Your conversation was good. You're really trying to help the customer. But what would have happened if they would have said, you know what, you didn't, you signed it, you don't get it, you got to pay a couple hundred bucks for it. What do you think would have happened? You'd have probably paid the couple hundred bucks, but been not too happy with them. That's right. I would have been back to where at Home Depot, probably. Exactly. And it's unfortunate because really I signed the document. Right. And anyone that mentioned a, a countertop project, you'd have said, oh, I don't go to Lowe's. Yeah. You know, and that's kind right. of a. Uh, yeah, and I think you know it's, and I, and I really thought about you and your team a little bit on that, like you know, if it, and that does happen, right? Yeah. I think you had a you know instance where somebody wanted one on your team to be on their call with an ISV, right? <laughs> so yeah. they sent a support ticket in. What'd you what they do? Right. They said, well, what we didn't want it to get billed for that. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, there's confusion. It's a newer customer, and right. customer engagement people do things for free, and even though we tell them. Right. At the end of the day. And I think that's kind of cool about how we you know, work at Inovia is that at the end of the day, the account manager owns the account. But you and your team, all the project managers, leadership team communicate to that account manager and through them. Right. And I think I think that's pretty cool. So but I don't yeah. know if I sorry if I went on a little. No. And I mean, even at the end of the day. So my team, what what we tell them and what we talk about is that, you know, a ticket comes in, um, react. Help whoever it is. Right. If they're no longer our, our client, they've moved on and they send us support and want our help, help them. We'll figure the other part out later. You know, if we're not sure if it's billable or not, help them. We'll figure that part out later. Um, you know, but the goal is always to get involved and help the client as quickly as possible and get them to success. The billing part of it. The, the other side of it, whether they were their partner or just a, a consultant to them, or maybe it's the first time we've met them, we'll deal with that later if we need to. But um, the main goal is to help them, get them successful. And uh, we've I've seen it across the board. We've had where someone came in and they just were desperate, needed help, really had uh, severed relationships with the previous partner, which wasn't even really a partner. Um, it was someone who just basically sold them the system and mm -hmm. really didn't know a lot about it. But, you know, they came along and they needed help and we jumped in and helped. Uh, Tom was out for a couple of weeks and, and it was a couple of weeks later that we uh, sorted out the paperwork and everything else. But they had uh, had their calls and been up and success successful for a couple of weeks prior. So um, they do as, as a company as a whole, whether it's support or project team, I think they pride themselves on that um, we'll jump in and help you and we'll take care of it, you know. And again, we always say, if you get a bill you don't understand or aren't happy with, reach out. And between the account managers and the project leaders and myself, uh, we are glad to walk through that and, and do credits where it's appropriate. And, and I think we're, you know, having that Midwestern value that we understand at the end of the day, it is about being fair, right? And yeah. You know, there's assumption on both sides that we're going to be fair and treat each other with respect and equally. And I think we're very fortunate. We have so many great customers. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, you kind of asked me, well, you know, what do I do? And, you know, I haven't really figured it out yet. But when I do, I'll give you the definite answer. But kind of, I can tell you kind of some of the things I do, which, you know, I, I always tell people I say I have the greatest job in the company. I get to sell the talent at Anovia. But it's really more than just that, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all looking for a fit. And yeah. and when I'm when I'm talking with you know customers that are considering Novia, you know when I tell them and I and I and I you know I try to do because of dealing with fear of change, is you know I let them know I said well you know thirty percent of ERP systems have never gone live, and that's actually a, a low number. And then when they start talking about the CRM in it or wanting CRM, then I say well double that. It's about two thirds. Which, you know, obviously I speak on that, and that's always blown my mind. The fact that it's controlling your contacts, activities, and that it's over the double failure rate, you know, and it's adoption. There's a lot of other things. That's another story, but they're all like, you know, I, I just want to bring it to their attention, especially if they're using QuickBooks, right? I'm sure those have been the, you know, not the, you know, it's been, 
I would say, I don't know if a challenge is a word, you know, when we started getting those people wanting to come over about two or three years ago with the D365. But when I have the conversations with these folks, I try to explain to them, you know, Donovan really, you know, he's Steve, this ain't QuickBooks, <laughs> you know, and he's right. And it's not. And, right. in, you know, Microsoft has kind of marketed not purely that it's QuickBooks, it's, but it's, it's QuickBooks on, you know, on steroids, it's so much more, but this is a full-fledged ERP system. And if you don't make that blueprint, like when you build a house, you're making a blueprint, right? And and uh, if you don't have it, things can go awry. And I live in an area where there's a lot of Amish people. And when you drive there, it's kind of like they built their house for their family. Well, they had a couple of daughters that got married, so they added rooms on, right? But the one bedroom connects to the master bedroom, so they got to walk through where the parents are. I'm like, I don't want a house like that, <laughs> right? Okay. You know, so if you knew that ahead of time, you would have designed the house thinking, you know, maybe if we're going to have our kids stay here and and they and, and you know, as their family grows, you know, that that needs to be, you know, taken into consideration. So I have a lot of those type of conversations with prospective customers and that, you know, I, and I keep asking why. And sales is called the five whys. And I know we talk about that in Novia. And uh, if, you know, it's I think of a, I had a friend of mine who went through a really bad situation and I just saw him and. How's it going? He goes, oh, 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 I'm fine. I'm like, you know, then after about the third one, he's like crying, right? Because you get, you kind of got to it. Uh -huh. We're, we're kind of programmed. And so we try to get to that where, okay, you know, you're in pain. There's a reason. Uh, let's, let's talk about that. Okay. It's, you know, why did you choose, why did you choose NAV to begin with? You know, I love asking that question, right? But what happens most of the time, you know, that was, Joe, that was 20 years ago and I wasn't here. <laughs> Right. I <laughs> so, so, yeah, then and the ones where I think my lack of really the in-depth part of the system is when, you know, when when somebody's maybe started their system 20 years ago and they went through three upgrades and they moved everything forward, everything forward, every modified. And then they come in and now want to do it again. And you're like, why? Well, I just want an upgrade. Why? Well, that's what I've done in the past. Why? <laughs> right. You know, and. Because now with the new BC and, and then the new code is that's really not the best path, is it? Right. Well, uh, BC SAS they it upgrades on its own behind the scenes, pretty regular. Um, there's hot fixes all the time uh, that happen, and so we are seeing in the beginning it was rough. Uh, those upgrades would crash and burn, but um, they really have honed that, and uh, they go pretty seamlessly. And uh, we watch them, we get a notification, so we know whose uh, environments are updating and uh, can see if there's anything that falls off. And really, they've been seamless. Even the last big major update went really well. Um, so, you know, and then in the future, in the new versions, that whole idea of large upgrade is going to be a th thing of the past. It really doesn't happen. It's every once in a while there's an extension that needs to get tweaked based on some changes in the system, but not too often, not too much. So it looks so, nice. You know, so if somebody had it on premise, Business Central, and and, and you know, they, you said that they do the updates for the SaaS. Do they roll out an update for that, or is it still like an upgrade process? It's still an upgrade, a cumulative updates, and uh, an upgrade process. Uh, the goal of, at this point, staying on premise would be that um, you have that time to build out from your old code to extensions. And then once you're in extensions, even in the new system, those upgrades get quicker because the extensions peel away. You do the upgrade and you put them back in place. Um, so again, uh, it's the system is becoming more sophisticated and adapting to the technology and to that upgrade environment. But when you're, if you're on-prem and you're considering an upgrade, um, you know, some people will come back, like you talked about why, is, you know, well, I went to the NAVUG summit and they said I should upgrade every three years and I'm at four, so I should upgrade. Um, you know, that's probably a good case study there to, you know, every three years is a good amount of time to uh, schedule and plan your upgrades. But again, you know, if your system's really working for you, you know, it's still questionable whether, you know, another year or two down the road is a better option. Um, you know, if there's something in the new improved environment that's going to help you or be great for your company, definitely you should uh, schedule that upgrade. But 
you know, there's a lot more to it than just planning an upgrade just for the sake of upgrading. Exactly. And I, and I think a lot of times when, you know, when, when I came over, you know, our account managers were basically people that ran either, you know, like Bob, basically, he actually ran a VAR, has been a CIO. We've had a couple people have been that. And, you know, the whole the whole mindset, it was easy to get, oh, the customer says this, let's do it. But, I, you know, I think what we've done is kind of went to that consultative type approach on, okay, you know, why the upgrade? Like you just said. It's like right. having a car, right? Like if you could have a car that's three years old and you've, you know, or maybe you lease and you get a new car and you're like, I, I might keep this car or you want to trade in. You know, you can run all sorts of, you know, ROI. Okay, I'm going to be out of warranty. You know, I need to start putting, you know, new brakes and all this other stuff in it. And, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, yeah. I, I told people like, you know what, to me, it's easier if you like the car to write the check <laughs> than if you don't like the car, right? But take care of the car. And, uh yeah. But 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 you, most people research. You know, one of the things that uh, as being a sales trainer in the past and, and and dealing with others is, you know, people that are trying to make transactions is that, you know, they call it blind spotting. Where we we and it's so prevalent now because of the internet, right? The World Wide Web makes us all smart, Holly. <laughs> right? It does. I could live on Twitter and become a genius. <laughs> it's kind of I, 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 actually I'm done with Twitter but that's they always story. tell the truth and they always tell the truth right but, if, but like let's get to that car now let's say you want to buy a brand new car so 30 years ago you had to go to the dealership to get the brochure you couldn't get online right you want to know, you want to know if there's a rebate or there's a financial incentive you just kind of had to go to the dealership and well now that's all online so but as you're researching it you, you kind of when you kind of you know, you, you think you become an expert. I mean, you become knowledgeable. So we need to separate that because you want to be knowledgeable so you can make a good decision. But are you really an expert? Right. Because when I was doing my countertops, I, I talked to two other people that kind of didn't went through the same process to kind of hear things on it. But I'd still miss the rehooking the, the re hooking up the, uh, the, you know, the plumbing. But I, I think when people will come, they'll say, I want this, I want that, I want this. Well, that's great. You did some homework. Let's talk about that. Because you still, I mean, we do, this is what we do for a living, right? I mean, we spend, this is what we do. And between the team of that we have, you know, don't you want our advice? <laughs> right? Yeah. Manny, you did all your research. But we said that in spine spotting and sales. Like, I remember if, if, if you did a couple things, like let's say you had a couple, let's say you're selling um, Mary Kay. And then your first four transactions, you get to the point where they, no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested. You just think that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Well, everybody's different, right? And so maybe that fifth person, you kind of go in, they're like, yeah, I want that. Boom, you got it. But it's, you know, every situation is different. But the goal should be similar, right? Because you you, you call your team the success, right? You you know, your success, what do you, um, what is it to uh, you? What, what is it? Yes. Customer success, because really, at the end of the day, is what, what I try to do with our current customers and our account managers is all this data is out there, right? And so you obviously ERP system, you want to flow it. You want to make sure that, you know, financials are working, you know, your inventory, your bill of materials, it all is working together. But really, at the end of the day, what do you want to do as a company? Why are companies in business, Holly? They're in business to make money. To make money. <laughs> all right. We got some not-for-profits. I get it. But at the end of the day, it's about making money. And and you also want to have good customer experiences. And so those are the conversations I try to have, understanding, you know, with my background, how to have those type of conversations and say, okay, you know, great. You know, there's, you know, we if you look at our website, what we've done with our website the last three or four years, it, you know, Tim and Keith have just done an amazing job, right? Right. Awesome job. Just, just an awesome job. But, but we've our kind con of content. Yeah. Content is king. It's to empower our clients and other people using the system. So, um, you know, we don't lock it down so that only our clients can see it. We, we put it out there for everyone to see it. And, you know, that's the goal is that we're empowering the community. Absolutely. And you, you are an all, you're a NAV all-star. So I and am. you're you're on the customer side, so you saw that, and you you were the you know chairman of the advisory committee. So I, I you know, and I and I know people know that some of our new listeners might not know that, but I think 
you know, what I like about what you, you brought and what we've, you know, the message, because it's, you know, when I was in hospitals, uh, account manager, and I called call these large systems. I, there were so many silos. Here's the, here, like this silo is nursing. This silo is administration. This silo is dietary. This silo is pharmacy. And they didn't talk to each other. You know, oh, it's the point fingers. It's there. It's that. And it, it doesn't really work well. And, I, and we'd have these conversations. I remember bringing directors over from each department to lunch or to, to a meeting. And they, that's the first time they ever met. Isn't that scary? And, and so I think through what we're trying to do as a as as a partner is through the customer's eyes, right? If we're going to do what we say we do, we need to break down those silos. And the silos are strong in ERP, isn't it? When yeah. I hear, when, you know, and, and I think it's great. The leadership team took a really, I think, uh, bold move to kind of, you know, do how we do business. Uh, but I think by doing that, reaching out, knowing that it's, you know, how, 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 did it help? Like, it's like the Lowe's experience, right? Oh, whoops. All right. Now we got to, we got to work together and fix it for the customer. And, uh, and as you know, if, if things go on and I know you're the same way, if it goes a week or two and no one gets back with me, I freak out. <laughs> I just, right. It's right. people want to know. I mean, things do slip through the cracks. We try to make it right. But at the end of the day, let me know what's going on. Right. Just keep me in the loop on that one so well this is kind of fun without jeff maybe we no, right? Jeff, you're fine it's jeff kind of fun we do like <laughs> i gotta be jeff. careful how he doesn't boot me <laughs> but it is fun you know and again we go back to like uh, we talk about our clients aren't erp experts that's not their career they right. all have jobs they all have business they're they're accountants they're purchasing agents their warehouse managers, their operations officers, all these different jobs and responsibilities they have. The ERP is not, you know, what they're knowledgeable. That's not their home base. They're going to learn the system and use it properly, but they don't know the mechanics of the whole ERP, the development side of it and things. That's where we come into play is, is really helping them to see that. I'm um, talking them through those things with those why questions is why you want to do that. You know, why would you think of doing that? You know, and pointing them in the right directions. And sometimes it's it's just giving them some ammunition to go back and say, you know, here's what those fields really mean. Here's what is in the system already. Go back to the team and see if they can't utilize what's there in base nav. You know, then looking at, you know, here's some ISVs. There's there's some great partners out there uh, in the software world that link right up to uh, nav and business central that can help them through everything that they're doing and wanting to do um, without adulterating the base nav system. And uh, so, you know, pointing them to some of those to look at and utilize. You know, and then if it really is something that's going to uh, help them and, and improve performance and productivity, and sometimes it's just a case study based on their industry, it's something they need that's not really there. You know, then going forward with those modifications and changes uh, to the system to help them to meet those needs. And we have some that are pretty, have some pretty customized systems uh, based on their industry that uh, we've done and we see. But um, for the whole, you know, that's that's the whole idea of con the, the consulting world is we are here to help them make the most and the best out of that ERP that their company becomes successful. Uh, that's, that, those are great points. And, you know, I think of the, when you talk about verticals, and I really didn't understand what the vertical world was until I got to Inovia. And then, you know, you think, wow, what? You know, that's a great idea. Then you realize, like, if you're with the wrong vertical and, what that can do. and they only do 75 percent that what you want. And, and uh, you know, I'm not going to give names. You know, we do a lot of food, though. <laughs> and, you know, the fact that they hold you captive because you they got your code and you can't go anywhere is crazy. Right. Right. And because I was like, why would you want to heavily modify your system with maybe a partner like us or somebody else versus going to the going to the one of these verticals? Well, now I, I, I kind of understand because, you know, if you're not happy with your partner, you can go to another partner. Right. If yeah. you're not happy with a vertical, depending you're on what fine. it is, yeah. you're, you're stuck. Right. And your options are limited. And, um, and and that could be another podcast on its own. But I think. You know, what we try to do is have those conversations, you know, and, and you know, we had a, I had a conversation with that with Scott earlier with a 
a, a somebody that was in a lot of pain and we couldn't help them. And it felt really bad. We're like, you know, this is where you're at. We can't help you. Uh, you know, and yeah. these are it's conversations you have to have. Not uncommon where they get hung up in some of that stuff. And, you know, we really try hard to make sure that we vet that stuff out with them and, and give them the knowledge and things that we know. Even with ISVs, um, there's ISVs that we lean towards or, or we uh, point them towards when they're looking in different areas. You know, that that comes with experience. That comes with our understanding those ISVs and knowing, you know, there are some out there that are difficult to work with. There are some out there we know aren't going to answer. They aren't going to help the client and they aren't going to help us if they run into trouble. Um, you know, so some of some of those conversations also, you know, come with a wealth of experience and understanding of the community and what's out there and what those companies are going to work like. And, you know, at Inovia, we we align with the ISVs that really have the same customer success and care mentality that we do. Um, you know, they're out there to care for these clients. And that's absolutely important. Like, let's go back to Lowe's. Like, they had a contractor come out to do it, right? But in yeah. my mind, who did it? Lowe's, Lowe's. Right? right? So I know when I, you asked me about when I talk with the ISVs, and uh, yeah, it can get a little tricky now with BC. I mean, more coming, you know, and I know Jeff brought up, brought up on one of the podcasts, too, is that, you know, you might be at an advantage because you don't have this old code and all this clunky stuff that you're trying to reinvent. You can start new, but but also, I figure you, you know what I what I found is that you lost, you know, also have the experience of being in 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 that, you know, arena, on it. But it's, you know, when I talk with them, I I, I, I want to know are you get you know, if they don't respond back to me, how and I got to wonder how they gonna respond to our customers. I right. don't want I do not want to wonder. Right, and I think we kind of hold them because we know when we recommend an an ad, an ISV add on. It's an Inovia recommendation. And what we try, I think what we try to do, what we do, I think, a very good job on is we have multiple ones in the channel. Like we have some that maybe they don't need a lot of transactions, right? Or they do a ton of transactions. You know, maybe it's EDI or maybe it's warehousing or maybe it's, you know, uh, credit card processing. We, you know, we tend to say, here's what, here's what they are. This is what they do. This is the cost. You know, let's talk about the ROI and let the customer make the decision, Right. Right. And then try to help them quarterback connecting it. And, and what's crazy is that we don't even charge for that for the account management. That's another podcast, <laughs> right? Hey. Those, those are little things that we do. But hey, Holly, uh, some cool things that I'm trying to do, you know, in, you know, I work with the ISVs, but uh, I'm playing with, uh, so uh, Microsoft bought LinkedIn several years ago. And so we're all on LinkedIn. We're pretty heavy on LinkedIn. And I try to have those discussions with our customers, but I've been playing with Sales Navigator which is pretty cool. What's that? And so Sales Navigator is uh, an extension of, uh, of LinkedIn to where like I can create um, prospects lists. I can, pr I can create industry lists. Uh, yeah. I, can, I can follow companies. And when people post things, subject matter experts, I can see that. Um, you can really see like I can, you know, I can go in and uh, like this is what I think is great for for an end user is if they're doing their due diligence, looking, you know, for an ISB or for whatever, they can go in there and search that and it'll pull up all the contacts in that arena. You can, so there's so much more ability to refine your search, but also get more data. And then it kind of speaks back to you uh, and how you can reach out to people. So that, that, that alone, I'm still kind of like in the earlier stages of it. But it is really neat. And I, I remember my first Navog meeting in Reno. And uh, this is when I realized my age. <laughs> so there's this young girl in, in there. And she was uh, and she was asking for something. She goes, oh, I'd like to connect with you. And so I hand her my business card. She goes, no, I'd like to connect with you. And I just, I just sent you a LinkedIn request. <laughs> and I looked at my phone and there it was, right? And it was yeah. like, oh, okay. But she goes, I don't know how old you are. She goes, I don't do business cards. I do LinkedIn. And man, woo, 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 the sirens go off, right? And so, yep. kind of ever since then, I kind of really extended that. And now, in the network, you know, it went from hundreds to thousands. And it's just a great way to stay connected with people. But also, when they search or when we share, and I try to explain it to companies look, you got to be relevant, you know, and, 
and and so forth. So those are other conversations I try to have with our with our customers. So yeah, good conversations. I like it. So continuous learning. You're learning something new out on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's you know it's a zero sum game. When I do sales presentations, I love doing them. You know, actually, Navog has had me do some for all the user groups, and I've done some on CRM, done some on sales action, I'm doing one at Summit on sales. Um, you know, it's it, you know, it's just it, it it's just something that I think when you talk about training, like I, I do, you like to read books? I love to read books. So I miss that gene. My brothers, my dad, even my mom read. Okay. I, had, I like reading box scores. <laughs> you know, I want to read about my, my fantasy baseball or football team or something. So about three or four years ago, I really challenged myself. And now I, I would read sales books or articles, but now I, I, I'm doing at least two books a month. But it's being that student, what you just said. 90% of salespeople have never read a book on sales or been to a seminar. 90%. There's a bigger shortage of professional salespeople than there are developers in this country. There's over 40 to 50,000 wow. development openings, and there's over a quarter of a million professional sales jobs open, and only 50 colleges that teach it. But it's that being that student, I listen to other podcasts, I read other books, you know, and then we, we you know, we talk internally, you know, you know about about things like that of how we can grow. Yeah. You know? and, and 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 it's something I think that's I'm not being lost, but it's you know, sales for some reason. You know, when I, when I, I think of, a, I still think of this company out in D.C. I went to a couple years ago. Owner of this company, $40 million a year company, Holly. He had the, all these salespeople, and uh, he, he, he was talking about a CRM. He goes, I told them all they had to have $2 million in the pipeline. And I said, great, let me guess. They all had $2 million in the pipeline. He goes, yes. And I said, because they wanted to keep their jobs, right? Yeah. And I go, how much of that is real? What do you mean? How much of that's real? And he goes, all of it. And I said, well, let me see your CRM. <laughs> and I'm looking through it. Fluff, fluff, everything. They keep putting things out a couple of months, you know. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard from Joe, whatever. And I looked at him. I said, so I got a question for you. All right. So what do you want it for? Do you want it for monitoring your salespeople and tell them what to do? Or, or do you want it to increase your sales? He goes, I want to watch what my salespeople do. I said, so if you had a salesperson that did three times more than the next guy, and didn't use the CRM versus one that did, what would you do? He goes, well, I'd fire that guy. I'm like, you'd fire the guy that sold three times as much as anybody else just because he didn't put the stuff in. And that's that's the stuff that kills me, right? right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I get it, but there might be another way to help that guy get the stuff in, right? Maybe you hire somebody externally to do it for him or whatever, but let's get rid of, let's get rid of your number one salesperson because you want to see the activity of the salespeople. Those are conversations. I love to have a lot of it's just training and education on that. Yep, it is. Yeah, so. All across the board. Any more questions for me? I know we're and I could, you know, I don't want to talk too much about myself. I'll get all shy here. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. Uh, so the community, so let's talk about the community. So right. you know, again, well, a couple more back. minutes. We should probably wind up in a couple minutes. All right. We'll try to. Well, Jeff's not here. Yeah. So he, yeah, he really reels me in. So. Flip the flip the the whip at us, um, but the community. We go back. You went to Reno to Summit back in 2015 first. Um, in the group, right out of the gate, you had to just be starting right about then. Oh yeah, I was a few months into it. So right before Reno, um, we kicked off the Great Lakes User Group. And so Tony Darden, who is a client for uh, Anovia, and myself worked together and we kicked off uh, Great Lakes Navig user group. And um, you were there. And, uh, you know, that's where I first met you and Alan and Tom and, and got to know you guys. And, and over the years with that group, uh, you guys were very involved. I began to call you guys our surrogate partner because you were there to help everyone and anyone. Again, that Adovia mentality of like, you need help, I'm going to help. I, we'll figure out the payment part of it or if it's just a, a gratis thing later. But, you know, we're here to help and be there for you. And uh, just the love for the community and the people, you know, Donovan would come to the meetings and it was just great, great fun. I do miss those meetings. Um, 
the coronavirus has killed us on all of that good stuff and being together. Can't wait till we get back to it. But, you know, just recently, the picture from that popped up because it was in August. It was this time of year that we had that first meeting um, of all of us. And I thought, you know, when I look at the picture and I think about that day and back then, you know, and that all those people in that picture, I think there were about 20 of us in the picture, you know, didn't know any of them. And who knew that most of them would be friends and coworkers and uh, clients and people that I'm close to now, you know, five years later and the connection to that. And a lot of that came because of people like you that are very involved and passionate about the user group and travel all over to be there and help and, and present and make sure that we have people there when our, our clients are there. So there's someone there for them to connect with, you know, and how that fits in. And, you know, so, you know, talk about your experience with uh, the user group and your passion for that and for being there for our clients. And I know I love being there just to hang out with the clients. That's my favorite part is just to be with the people and talk with them and eat lunch and, Hear what they've got going on. Well, I think it kind of trickled down from when I got hired. You know, Donovan started the first chapter in Madison, Wisconsin, called Madog, and you know, and then look what it has become. And it, when, when for me, it was I was more I was kind of more selfish for me because you know I want to learn about the product. And Tom's like, you got to go to these user groups, you know. And then so my mindset is, I remember going to the first group meeting, which I went was a Cleveland one. I didn't have a shirt at the time. At the time, we were ABC Computers, and he throws me a, his, one of his old polo shirts. So I'm like, okay, I'll wear this. <laughs> <laughs> now I have all these Anovia shirts, but right. uh, but I just remember, I was like, wow, you know. First off, and you know, they I always try to keep in mind when I go to meetings that it's somebody's first meeting, probably. And I remember like being a little overwhelmed. I'm like, am I ever going to learn this? Because this is totally different than what I learned, that change thing. But I made up my mind. I'm like, I will learn it. I will figure it out. You know, I will, you know. And then as I kind of went to other meetings and we had other customers, we were very fortunate. We have other customers that are chapter leaders that wanted support. And so uh, since I am not billable, besides being, you know, <laughs> I get I, I get to go to a lot of these meetings. And I think just meeting people. And I remember uh, – I can't remember if it, was, if it was talking with you or you and Lori Kuehl from Navog, and and uh, and she said, you know, like you ought to present. I said, Lori, it's my background. I'm sales, marketing, value chain, you know, value <clears throat> value analysis, and, and she's like, well, you could present on that. And I was like, oh, I thought you had to present exactly on the software like these other people did. And so I think by your encouragement, her encouragement really drove me to help get more focused on doing that. And now it's like it's it's fun. You know, and I right. get my annual nomination for an all-star and I get my annual nomination to clap for somebody else. <laughs> so it's all good, though. Right. Hey, let's hope this is the year. This, this is this, the year. This is the year. Uh, You're Steve. listening and it's before voting is over. Get out there and vote for That's Steve. Right. Steve doesn't want to be a bridesmaid again. Help, help. No. <laughs> it's, there's so many, ta- you know, they pick three. And the beauty is, is that there's everybody that's nominated. You look at that list. They're passionate too about yeah. it, you know, and so forth. So uh, I'm honored every year. You know, the the, the three years I've been nominated, I'm just honored to be uh, listed with some of those people. So, but uh, if you want to vote for me, I'll let you. <laughs> so, right. so anyway, Holly, I, I you know, I'm very fortunate I get to go and present and 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 help our customers and so forth. So, but we're winding down here. Any any party message you want to say to Jeff? If uh, okay. should we give? You know what we haven't done? We haven't given out something free for a while. Oh, hey, let's do that. You know, and I was talking with Angie. I said, hey, Angie, do you have any backpacks? She goes, we got some new backpacks coming in. Yeah, so I don't have a new backpack yet. You do or don't? No, I no. don't. Okay. So, so the winner will have one before me. All right. So let's let's do a new backpack. What do you think we should, what do you think that it should be? What do you, what do you think that for the contest here? We should do something like, you know, hashtag Holly for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about this? How about this? The first person that sends an email to support at Anovia, supportanovia.com, it says, hashtag Holly Rock the Podcast. Perfect. What do, what do you think? I like it. All right. Support at Anovia.com, hashtag Holly Rock the Podcast. Well, cool. Well, sounds great, Holly. I appreciate you taking time on your busy day and hijacking this. You know how many people are going to listen to this podcast and send that to support at Anovia.com. And I have a brand new 
dispatcher. So he's going to love the opportunity to hone his craft. In so should we exclude all anybody that has a last name Kudel in this? And <laughs> give it to right. customers. No one named Kudel can apply. Nobody for yeah. Those uh, the rules have been clear. And right? Holly Holder can't either. It, it, that's <laughs> right. And so, and my wife is excluded. So because uh, I know she's a listener. Sorry, Linda. Anyway, um, but it, for hopefully we'll get uh, we'll get that. Uh, uh, some we'll we'll announce the winner whenever that happens. We're excited, Holly. Thanks for hijacking this. It was fun, yeah, Jeff. Thanks. Miss you, buddy. Yeah. I uh, hope you had Thank a great vacation. You. Hurry and, back, Jeff. And, and as always, you can follow us on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we're on Twitter and also at Anovi.com, where we have a lot of wonderful things that we talked about here, a lot of free resources on there. And Holly, this podcast is over. It's done. Over. And out. <laughs> <laughs>